and welcome back to the Strategic Service YouTube channel. My name's Eric. Today, I'm going to go over a typical hiring process in the security industry. It starts with making a connection. Most companies post on sites like Indeed, Career Builder, Craigslist. You find the ad, you submit an application and attach your resume, and after that, they go through a resume review. Some pointers on your resume to make sure that you stand out among other candidates, keep it short and concise. And don't forget to spell check. Apply with only relevant employment history. If your resume is 10 pages long, nobody's gonna read it. We don't need your entire life story in a resume. One month here, two weeks there, a summer here. It's too much. Don't be too concerned with gaps in employment history. Those are questions that we ask in the interview process. After you submitted your application, a recruiter is going to review your resume and basic questions that were asked in the process and determine your eligibility for employment. More than anything, they need to make sure that either you already have the industry licensing, a guard card, a handgun permit, or whatever, or that you're able to obtain and maintain those credentials. At that point, a recruiter is going to reach out to you, typically by phone call or email and they're going to ask you some follow-up questions. Questions pertaining to your criminal history or your driving history, maybe even other questions such as where you live, how far you want to travel, to make sure that we have anything actually in your area that's suitable for you. Also, most of the time, this is the point in which we run a soft background check. Now it's time for the interview. We're going to reach out again, either by phone or email to schedule a time for you to come in, or a lot of companies have moved to virtual interviews now. In either event, you need to treat them the same. Dress professionally. If it's virtual, make sure that you're somewhere quiet and conducive to an interview. Also, during the virtual interview, make sure that you're actually paying attention to the interviewer. I can't tell you how many times people start smoking cigarettes or ordering lunch or even going to the bathroom in the middle of my virtual interview. I'm not gonna give you too many tips on how to ace an interview per se, because there's plenty of that information out there already. However, I can fill you in on some of the security specific items that may be found in every interview. More than likely, you're going to be hit with scenario based questions, specifically pertaining to use of force situations. Now you just coming into security may have never received any sort of use of force training. These questions are meant to see if you're even in the right headspace to work a job like this. The training will come, but more than anything, what you need to look for is the fact that use of force is only justified in self-defense or defense of another innocent person. Outside of that, especially in terms of verbal provocation alone, use of force is not justified. Now going back to something I said before, we're going to ask you about gaps in your employment history that we found on your resume. Make sure you have an answer for each gap. And there's no right or wrong answer for what a gap in employment history may have been. I've heard people pursuing degrees in college. Some people have told me that they didn't have childcare at the time, so they became a stay-at-home parent. Some people just flat out told me that they wanted to take a break from work. And all that's fine, as long as you have a reason. Because what we need to make sure is not the case is that you're not unemployable. So also going back to what I said before about why we don't wanna see resumes with short terms of employment, is because it looks to us like either you get fired a lot or you get bored and quit. So after the interview is conducted, make sure you thank the interviewer for their time and ask when is a good time that I can follow up with the progress of my hiring process. They'll typically tell you to give them two or three days, maybe a few weeks, depending how busy they are. But make sure that once you leave this interview, you're not calling, emailing and texting every day. It's too much and it demonstrates that you may be too needy of an employee. And in an industry as busy as ours, we need maintenance free employees more than anything. So after our interviews are conducted, at that time we take all the applicants that all the recruiters went through and we start to rank them. The ones at the top get all the first offers. The ones down lower tend to get held over to the next hiring process, if not rejected. So after the applicants are ranked, we start calling and making offers. We're typically only going to identify the pay rate, days and hours of the schedule, and a general location of the assignment. We do this just to make sure that we're not giving away client information to someone who may ultimately not accept an offer. So generally at that point, you then get scheduled for an orientation where you come into the office for training and to complete all the final hiring paperwork, such as schedule agreement, sign the offer that you were given, receive uniform items, and any state required paperwork for that particular industry licensing. My advice to you is before you leave, make sure you know the exact address of where it is you're to report to on your first day and the name and phone number of someone to contact in the event of any issues. Now I'm telling you, calling off on your first day is a sure way to have that offer rescinded. 
Congratulations, you're now officially on field training. The most important part of being on field training is your attendance. Your goal for the first 90 days is not to miss a single day. That is gonna set you out and put you on the track to being a supervisor, if that's what you're looking for. I hope this information helped you. If it did, feel free to like and subscribe and I'll catch you in the next video.